Hi there! In our previous video, we just finished our pre-processing pipeline so that we have some input that we're going to give to our model. And in the coming videos, we're going to create that data science pipeline so that we can train our model. Now, our task is to train that model so that we can predict the prices of the shuttles. So let's have a look at what do we have to do. We are going to create a very simple linear model using scikit-learn, a popular machine learning library for Python. And we're going to use that model input table, separate the feature that I want to predict, which is the price, from a number of features that I'm about to select. And I'm going to serialize that model so that I can use it later on. Instead of jumping straight to coding, let's first go back to Jupyter and explore the data a little bit. Now, if I go to my Jupyter interface and I go to notebooks, I'm going to create a new one that I'm going to call model training. So I'm going to pick the default kernel. I'm going to call this model training and I'm ready to start. Now, since I'm going to use scikit-learn, I need to install the library before I do anything else. So let's do just that. I'm going to do pip install scikit-learn and I'm going to give this a couple of seconds to finish. After I do that, I should be able to use the library without problems. Now, remember that I already have my model input table serialized on disk, which means that I can load the Kedro extension, load ext kedro.ipython, and I can use the catalog to directly retrieve my model input table. So that would be catalog.load model input table. And I'm going to save that in a variable called df. And I'm going to display the head. Now, as you can see, this is my complete table with all the columns that I aggregated and so on. Now, as it's typical in a machine learning training process, I will need to split the data into my training set and my test set. For that, let's first import scikit-learn. So import scikit-learn, just to check what version do we have. So as you can see, this is version 1.3, which is the latest one at the time of recording. Now I will need from scikit-learn model selection import train test split. And finally, I will need to pick a subset of the features because I'm not going to use them all for training. Now, we could go off a tangent and inspect which are the features that I want to use, but instead I'm going to skip that and copy paste them from the documentation. So if you go back here under the input parameter configuration, you see there's a number of column names that I'm going to use here. Notice that this is going to become a parameter file later on in the development of the pipeline. But more on that on a few videos. For now, let's copy these column names that I will store inside features. And let me do some magic to have them as a list of strings. Okay, now I have my list of column names that I want to use. And so my feature matrix is going to be df with this subset of features. And my target vector is going to be the price column. So let's inspect what we have. If I do x.head, then you have only this subset of features that I care about at the moment. And y, on the other hand, has the price number for each of the rows in the original data frame. Now let's proceed with what we have to do now, which is calling the train and test split function with x and y, and this is going to produce x train, x test, y train, y test. And that is it. I can check what's the number of rows that I have now if I do a len function call, and I should see that the number of rows for both the X and Y versions of train and test are the same. This is all very nice, but it would be better if we parameterized the length of these outputs 
so that we can change that later on in the future more easily. For that, I'm going to use the test size parameter and I'm not going to be very careful now, so I'm going to hard code it to two. That gives a slightly different result because the default was something else, but we don't care that much at this point. And now that I have the train and test split of my data, let's actually train the model. For that, I'm going to do sklearn linear model import linear regression. My model is going to be this linear regression here for now without changing the default hyperparameters. And I'm going to do model.fit x train y train. So now we have our model fitted, which means that I can do model.predict with my x test data. And this will give me an array of numbers. Now, how good is this model? Well, let's use some metric so that we can verify that. I'm going to import from sklearn metrics, import r2 score, and then I'm going to evaluate my model. So this will be the predicted y values. So this would be model.predict x test. And I can compare with r2 score the true values, which are y test, with the predicted values, which are y pred. Okay, my r2 is not really that good. It's 0 0.2. So there's lots of margin for improvement here. But let's recap a little bit. We have selected a subset of the features. We have trained a linear model and now we are evaluating its score. Now it's the moment in which I need to start trying out other sets of features, see if some of the combination improves the score, potentially do some more pre-processing or feature engineering. But you know, if I do everything of that in this notebook, things are going to get messy really quickly. So in the next video, we're going to move all this code to another Kedro pipeline. And then we're going to start iterating with parameters and other features so that we can improve this accuracy a little bit.